Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson, M.D., is about how people and businesses may respond to changing times and conditions by learning how to adapt quickly and successfully. The book offers guidance on how people and organizations can do this. The story revolves around a parable about two mice and two people who dwell in a maze and search for cheese. The things that each individual wants in life and what happens when the cheese that they have been enjoying disappears. A group of old classmates gets together for a reunion. They discuss their lives up to this point, including the challenges and conflicts they've had at work and at home, and the solutions they've found. One of them is Michael. He talks about how his business was on the verge of failure before he listened to a story that shifted his perspective and helped him turn things around for the better. He then proceeds to narrate the tale. A very long time ago, in a land far, far away, there was a big maze in which two mice and two very small people lived together. Everyone starts out incredibly dedicated to their work. They got up quite early every morning and put in a lot of effort in order to obtain the cheese. Suddenly, one day, the mice, Sniff and Scurry, come across a large supply of this cheese. Not far away, the little people, Hem and Haw, also come across a large supply of cheese, which, in their context, refers to the things that people want in life, or in other words, riches. Everybody settles down to enjoy the food, or, to put it another way, the good things they have in their life. While the humans put their shoes away, put on slippers, and simply enjoy their mountain of cheese, the mice leave their running shoes nearby and visit the station every day to see if anything has changed such as whether the cheese has gone bad or whether there is a lack of it, symbolizing that humans are not worried at all that their wealth, or cheese, may end one day. And eventually there came a day when there was no more cheese. The mice, Sniff and Scurry, start looking around the room for any more, but they can't locate any. Sniff and Scurry made the decision to head back into the maze in search of new cheese. They prepare to go by putting on their running shoes and looking over at Hem and Haw to see if they are going to follow them. When they tried to follow them, Hem and Haw waved them off and said that they'd wait in the room overnight in the hopes that the cheese would return in the morning. In search of more cheese, Sniff and Scurry set out to explore the rest of the maze. Sniff detects the presence of a new food supply and rushes to the location. They quickly discover a large amount of cheese and begin eating it as soon as they locate it. Hem and Haw, meanwhile, continue to visit the empty room daily in hopes of discovering some fresh cheese. They are stunned that their comfortable lifestyle is over. Hem is mad and thinks that someone else moved the cheese. He constantly thinks, how can they do this to us and where is our cheese? How can they take it away from us? And so on. Hem is of the opinion that they have a right to their cheese and that they ought to wait for the others to give it back to them. In that sense, Hem places the blame on forces outside of himself. They are also becoming very weak because they have had nothing to eat for days. Haw isn't quite as confident and is wondering whether they should look for new cheese in another location or if the mice, Sniff and Scurry, have already found any cheese. Hem, however, is firm in his position and does not want to go with him. After a number of days of going hungry and coming to the conclusion that the cheese will not miraculously return, Haw decides to venture out into the maze all by himself, despite his fear and the fact that he is alone. Haw quickly discovers slivers of cheese hidden away in different locations. Even though he is worried and confused, he knows that the hunt is an exciting adventure and in no way a bad thing. Haw came to the realization that if he had looked attentively around him while they still had a lot of cheese, he would have observed that it was getting smaller and that it didn't taste very good after some time had passed. Subsequently, he would have been able to prevent the cheese from going bad. Even though Haw was unable to locate a large, fresh cheese at that time, he was content with the choice of going out of that empty room. He felt more energized and in control after deciding to take action. Whenever he found himself having second thoughts, he would picture himself obtaining the largest cheese in the world, and this would push him on to continue. As new realizations come to Haw, he writes them on the walls of the maze, holding out hope that Hem may one day emerge from the maze and make use of the notes as he travels. One day, Haw stumbles upon the enormous cheese hoard in the same location that Sniff and Scurry currently call home. Haw, extremely happy, is quick to settle in, but he makes sure to keep his jogging shoes close by in the event that this particular batch of cheese is gone. Additionally, Haw conducts daily inspections of the cheese station, looking for signs of moldy cheese, as well as any other indications that something is about to go wrong. 
He considered tracking down Hem and bringing him there to try the new cheese, but ultimately concluded that Hem needed to decide for himself. He had left him enough tracks to follow if he chose to get out of that location. In addition, Haw came to the conclusion that he could have found the new cheese sooner if he had walked out into the maze earlier. Yet, better late than never, he said to himself. After hearing this story, the students engage in a conversation about how it might relate to their own lives. Michael is appreciative of their appreciation for the parable, and he has high hopes that they will pass it on to other people. Here are some basic takeaways from the book. Lesson 1. Accept and Welcome the Change The only thing that stays the same in this world is change. Whether it's your job or your company, things will inevitably change throughout time, and you must adapt along with them. Otherwise, you will suffer the same fate as Hem in the story and lose your cheese. Customers were lost to these individuals and companies who did not adapt to changing times. One company that exemplifies this is Nokia or Blockbuster. In the face of challenging change, discover fresh chances for personal development. Hem reacted to the new circumstances when cheese was no longer available. He responded by pointing fingers at everything other than himself and taking no action to improve the situation. Instead, he could have acted in ways that were within his sphere of influence. In the same way, as changes occur, we need to continually search for new opportunities and methods to expand our horizons. Lesson 2. Conquer Your Fears Because of your fear, you might choose to remain where you are, like Haw did. Your anxiety will vanish, however, once you start visualizing all of the positive outcomes that will result from embracing change. Keep in mind what Haw said when he asked, What would you do if you weren't afraid? Haw realizes that he was wrong to be afraid of going back outside to get more cheese. He had let his fear build up, but the situation wasn't that bad. He runs into problems in the maze, but he realizes that he's happier being in charge of his life than being a victim of it. He keeps imagining himself eating new cheese, which keeps him going. One way to get over this fear is to see your goals in your mind, which is what Haw did. Make a vision that makes you want to see a better future. Change might not be so bad once you get started. Lesson 3. Always keep a watchful eye. There are certain people who, like Sniff and Scurry, are always aware of how the circumstances around them are shifting. These are the individuals that recognize the shift sooner, adapt to it, and subsequently reap the rewards. You are required to follow suit. Keep an eye out for shifts that are going to take place during the next 6 to 10 years. Learn some new talents and move in the right direction. Lesson 4. Rather than resisting change, it's best to embrace it. The majority of individuals hold the view that change is something to be avoided. They never stop dwelling on the past. There are times when progress is desirable. In fact, the technological advancements that we today take for granted are the direct result of fresh developments that have occurred throughout the course of time. When you recognize the need for change and adopt a constructive attitude toward it, you will find that you are able to appreciate the process of change. Change is the only thing that stays the same, and you can't avoid it. It will happen. Everyone deals with it in their own way. Some just sit back, say it's God's fault, and feel sorry for themselves. Some people just refuse to change. But there are also people who are always prepared, willing, and able to get back on their feet and make the best of it. The cheese is found, moved, and then found again in the story. Even if the changes aren't for the better, we can still get our cheese by changing our habits, facing them head-on, and doing everything we can to overcome the mental barriers keeping us from accepting and becoming more proactive humans. If you like book summary videos like this, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. Thank you for watching. See you soon.